Thank you, Shoot, for that nice introduction. Yes, today, uh, welcome all. Uh, I'm happy to see there's a lot of you here. Uh, I'm going to do a talk about Gutenberg, um, which you probably know, but I'm going to ask some questions about that later. Um, I'm going to do a talk on Gutenberg to let you know what it is, uh, what it does, uh, what it tries to do, uh, what it can do yet. Uh, and most of all, I'm trying to inspire you to start playing with it, um, test it, give feedback to the development team and make this whole Gutenberg product better and make sure that it works for everybody as soon as it arrives in WordPress 5.0. So a little bit about myself, Sjoerd introdu introduced a, a little bit about myself. Um, now my slide is gone. Cool. And your mic. And my mic. I'm totally off the grid now. Oh, that's cool. Hello. Uh, oh, uh, okay, I think there's something very going wrong here. There we are, we're back. It went to sleep. Okay, this sucks. Okay, we're back. Sorry for that. Um, Technical difficulties. difficulties always happen when you don't want to, to happen. So I'm a business owner, uh, I'm a developer, I'm a salesperson, I do, I'm a treasurer for my own company. Basically I do everything. And in my company I do a lot of WordPress stuff. And besides that, besides consuming WordPress, as I heard somebody said this morning, I also give back a lot of uh, time and effort uh, to WordPress. I help organize work camps. Uh, I was the lead developer for WordCamp Netherlands in 2016. Who was there? Just a few. Maybe there's another one coming up, so keep an eye on that. And I'm also lead developer, or lead developer, lead organizer for WordCamp Rotterdam, which is uh, coming up on the 23rd and 24th, 4th of March. And we have some tickets for that available. So if you want to come to Rotterdam, uh, please visit the website and um, buy a ticket and meet us there. So, what do you know about Gutenberg? Who heard of Gutenberg? Okay, that's a lot of people. Who has installed it on his local development, on his live website? And who has really played with it? Made some posts, added blocks, those kind of things. Okay, cool. So there's a lot of people in here who haven't played with it, who don't really know what it is, except heard of it. And are there any people developing stuff for Gutenberg? Okay, the hands are disappearing quickly. So, um, who has never seen Gutenberg in action? Who really doesn't know what it does? Okay, that's a lot of people. So I'm gonna help you out in a, in a few slides, in a few minutes. Uh, I'm gonna give a live demo, ooh, exciting, <laughs> and um, of what Gutenberg is, what it does, and what you can do with it, and um, how the team behind Gutenberg and also myself see Gutenberg as a bright future for WordPress and a very new future for WordPress. So, Gutenberg, who, who, who is he? Gutenberg is a, is a guy who has the full name of this, Johannes Gensfleisch zur Laden zum Gutenberg, so we, well, abbreviated to Gutenberg, which is easy for us. And he was born somewhere around 1400, and uh, they're not quite sure when he was born, um, probably because of GDPR in that time. And um, he invented a machine uh, to print stuff. Usually people wrote stuff on, in that time, which well didn't really uh, cater for uh, mass production. And he invented a machine uh, which they called the movable type uh, press. And there's probably another CMS around here which has his name derived from that, but I'm not going to go further into that. Um, they totally revolutionized uh, book printing and they started with the Bible and enabled the Bible to be mass distributed, well, to everywhere. We all know what that led to. Here you see a picture of him, which is supposedly him because, well, we didn't have pictures in that time, so somebody drew him and he must have looked something like that. And this is a piece of the machinery, which is not that good visible, I hope, but uh, which consists of a lot of letters. You place them on a, on a piece of wood, and you put them in a machine, paper through and ink, and then you have a Bible. So, 
when we look at the WordPress editing experience as we have it right now, um, we're all used to that. We, we are used to working with the editor, editing, edit, adding text, adding all kinds of other stuff. And to be honest, it's not that good. And I'm going to clarify on that because it works. For a lot of people, it works. Uh, we can uh, put some plugins in it to use other stuff and add blocks. Not blocks, sorry, I have to come to that. We add widgets, we add embeds, we add short codes and other kinds of stuff. And this is basically, well, very familiar for all of us. We have this uh, text editor and we have a lot of stuff around it in which you can add content to your post, your page, or whatever content type you're using. And there's a lot of stuff wrong with this. And I'm not going to criticize us on how WordPress has been uh, evolving the last few years. Um, but we are at a point now that we know that we can do better as a WordPress product. Uh, what you see is what you get is the name of a tab on the content editor, on the text editor. But in most cases, that's not really what you get. You add some short codes, you add images, and it's always, or always, and sometimes it's a big surprise to see how that ends up uh, on the front end of your site. So it's not really what you see is what you get. We have widgets in which you can configure all kinds of stuff, uh, which appends, are we going to do this again? No. Which appends all kinds of stuff to your site and, it's gone again. Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and switch off my power thingy, which I should have done. I've, I've added my power cord, so it should not go to sleep. But hey, we're doing a presentation, so why not do it? Come on. By the way, I'm, since I started my company, I've been using uh, open source software for everything I do. So basically, this is Linux you're looking at. And it doesn't really kind of behave nicely when we are doing presentations. So that's a um, point of learning for me. So next time I'm going to well, probably use another operating system to do my presentation so we don't get into this trouble again. Are we back up? I don't want to report a problem. Let me just uh, figure out how I put off my power. Power. Let's go. I got like one. I start of not suspend, do nothing. That's it. Okay. Uh, back to grow. Okay. Sorry for that again. So we're back with uh, the short codes. You add short codes to your your content. You don't really see what the short code does in your text editor uh, unless you do a preview of your post. Uh, then you see what it generates in the in the front end, and also. There's media which you can add, you can add videos, you can add images or PDFs or whatever kind of media uh, which you don't really see in the editor what it ends up with. So when we go to Gutenberg, sorry, when we go to Gutenberg, it has blocks and the blocks in Gutenberg basically define how you build your page or your post content. You have a block for text, you have a block for an image, for a video, etc. There's a lot of blocks and I'm going to show you in the demonstration. And these blocks allow you to do direct manipulation. Uh, so in contrary to the thing you do in the current text editor, you have to go to the front end, look what it, do, what it looks like. And in Gutenberg you can definitely see in the editor how your content is going to end up on your website. So you can directly manipulate your content. The other thing about Gutenberg is that we as a WordPress product can provide a new way of editing content, but we have to make sure that everything that has already been published with WordPress, which is almost 30% of the internet, still works after we launch Gutenberg and after Gutenberg becomes the default setting of editing content. So that's a major challenge for uh, the development team and for all contributors who are working on Gutenberg and that's something that's being thought about and being tested constantly. Another big question is when is it ready? 
And that's a question that I can't answer right here. I've done a lot of investigation about it, talked to people. No one really can give an answer. When we did this, then it's ready. So that's very difficult because constantly there are coming new enhancements to Gutenberg, which are good, but it seems like the project is being stretched until we don't know when. And when we really want to use Gutenberg and we want to put it in production, we need to have an end to the project of Gutenberg as a well, minimum viable product, to, to use this term. So it is basically done, and after that we can start adding new stuff, changing stuff, and making it even better, if that's possible. I'm trying to move my mouse uh, a few times so it doesn't go to sleep again. So when is it ready? This is not really visible. I had to switch down the resolution, but this is a screenshot of the, um, the GitHub repository for Gutenberg. And you cannot read it. I cannot even read it from here. But it says 606 issues open. That means that if you uh, have a product that you want to launch in the first quarter of 2018, bless you, what has been said by Matt Mollenweg in Paris on WordCamp Europe, um, that's a very challenging deadline. And I'm not saying it's not going to be done. I don't know. There's a lot of people contributing, so these issues might disappear in a few weeks. I don't know. But there's constantly coming new issues. And there's constantly coming new changes. So it's, it's difficult for the Gutenberg product to be defined as a product then, OK, it's ready right now. So how do you start with Gutenberg if you haven't done that yet? Well, it's basically one step with a few mini steps, but one step sounds pretty cool, right? And you go to your, uh, your WordPress uh, dashboard, you go to your plugins screen, and you search for Gutenberg. Uh, basically, you don't even have to search anymore because it's added to the um, screen of, um, how do you say that, featured plugins. Uh, so you can select it right there. So you can see the nice logo up there. It's also right here on my shirt. Um, install that plugin, then activate it and you're done. So that's one step. If we then memorize the editor, or, which we all knew, like we currently have it, um, this is the editor you get when you activate Gutenberg. What's the first thing you see? What's, what's the first thing you notice? Anyone? No, no meta boxes. Anyone? Anything else? What do you notice? No tiny MC. No tiny MC, that's correct. Anything else? It's clean. it's clean. That's exactly the word that I wanted to hear. It's clean. And when it's clean, it means that people who write content, they can concentrate on writing that content. When you see the previous editor or the current editor, you have a lot of thingies around it. And of course, you can select those uh, widgets in, in your top screen, in your screen settings, and you can disable all those boxes. So you only have to focus on your, your content editor. Uh, or you can, uh, you can launch the full screen editor, which is currently in the editor, to well, disable all the clutter from the side. But this is basically the Gutenberg editor as it is. So, showing screenshots of stuff that's being developed it's not that handy. Um, I created some slides for this presentation when I was building it. And as soon as I had 10, 15 slides of this with screenshots on it, I got a notification, Gutenberg has been updated. <sighs> OK, so there we go. I needed to make new screenshots. Uh, after one iteration, I thought, this is not going to happen. This is not going to work. Um, I'm not going to finish my presentation for WordCamp Antwerp, which is not going to be fun if I don't finish it. So I had to figure out something else. So um, as a developer, I have a local development environment running on Vagrant. And if you want to talk about that, we can do that later on. And I have a WordPress uh, set up right there. And I'm going to show you now in a live workshop, drum roll please, how Gutenberg is, thank you. How Gutenberg works, and is it okay if I sit here for a video? Yeah? Okay. So we're going to switch to another browser. And this is my development website uh, on my local environment. And I've called it Gutentest, pressing content like a block. And 
I've created a post, which is a rather simple post, has some text, has a paragraph with the drop caps, which is the, the big letter T there. And that's basically it. I added a, a paragraph and a read more, and that's it. So if we look at that in the Gutenberg editor, basically what you see, and of course this is a basic site with a 2017 uh, theme and no further, well, thingies around it, so it basically is what you see is what you get. Well, except for the read more dashed line, but well, that's basically it. And this is the editor. It has a post title right there. It has a paragraph, and as soon as you select the paragraph, we have a slimmed down uh, uh, tiny MCE editor right there. And if you select a block, you can see all kinds of attributes for that block. So every block in Gutenberg has attributes. You can change the, the, the font size, and you immediately, immediately see that it changes in the block itself. And we can put it at that size. We can make a drop cap on it. We can change the background color to, well, French fry color. Hmm, not very good for French fries this color, but you get it. Uh, we can change the text color, so it's not, well, it's, it's still a bit accessible, I hope. And we can align the text uh, to the left or to the center. And we can add additional CSS classes, which might be handy if you have a theme that tries to uh, style everything in a certain way. You can add a CSS class here. You can add the CSS class to your style sheet, and then voila, we're done. Of course, everything you see here, like the attributes and stuff, are all filterable. I don't, are there any people who don't know what filtering means in WordPress? OK, it's just a few. Uh, I'll explain it a bit. Uh, all the code in WordPress, or most of it, uh, enables developers to filter it. So at this moment, the, the, the block attributes have, well, background color and text color. And with the use of a filter, we can say, I don't want to show the background color, and I don't want to show the text color. So we can change the core functionality with a own plugin or a few lines of code, code in your functions.php. Um, <coughs> Basically, if there are any questions while I'm doing this, please raise your hand or just ask the question because I like to answer a lot of questions about this stuff. And I'm going to take a look at some other blocks that are available. If you have your page in, uh, in Gutenberg, you have a special box on the, uh, on the bottom in which you can add stuff. So here you have the uh, Add Block button. And you can add, well, recent blocks. These are the most used blocks that you have done. Well, I haven't been uh, using it this long, so there's not a, a, a representable uh, number of blocks in there. Um, but when you look at this, this is basically a list of all the blocks that are in here. Um, not surprisingly, subhead, a quote, a paragraph, a video. Uh, custom HTML, a pull quote, uh, a verse, which is basically a pre-formatted piece of uh, text. We can add buttons. A lot of people are going to like that one because I know there's a lot of plugins out there that help you generate buttons for your content in which you have to create a short code and, and possibly other, other stuff in that short code. And now you can just, well, let's just add it. We can add a button. Um, sorry. There you can see that it's sometimes still a bit buggy. Uh, you can basically say, click me right here. We can change the background color to green and the font to black. I said black. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, and the, the glitches you see here that, well, sometimes things just disappear. And that's basically the signs of things that are not yet finished. And all these things are hopefully registered as issues and in GitHub. And when you play with Gutenberg, and you see these kind of kinds of things happening, please report it and tell it to the authors and the team of Gutenberg so you can have them fix it or have other people fix it who contribute to, the, uh, to Gutenberg. So if we now update this uh, post in which we've changed a few basic things, you can see that in the front end, it looks exactly, except, except, except for the dashed line of the read, me, uh, read more uh, line, it looks exactly as I had it in the Gutenberg editor. And this is basically the, 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 the first and the only reason that Gutenberg is going to be a great product. People like to make content, 
format it in the way that they want it uh, in the back end, and then show it on the front end like they have um, uh, thought of it. Go ahead, boss. Can you put off the color thing? Because I have a lot of clients who will really love to use it, but it won't benefit their project. Yes, exactly. Well, that's what I said with the, the filtering. Yeah. All, all, the all the attributes uh, of all the blocks that are in there um, uh, are or will be filterable so that we as, a, as developers, we can switch that off for customers who like to play with colors like I'm doing right now, yeah. which is not going to help with accessibility and readability and those kinds of stuff. And can you bring up two or three options, or is that not a...? Uh, yeah, you can, you can extend uh, a block uh, with, this, with its own attributes. Yeah. Uh, you can add new attributes, remove them, uh, change them. Uh, for color, exa for example, um, if you've built a theme for a client, which is, well, like 2017, uh, white and black text, uh, you can define your own color set that you want the customer to be to, cho to choose from, and um, you, know, you can basically uh, well, uh, put a fence around the option that a client can use. Perfect. Okay, thank you for your question. Uh, we've been playing with a small team. We do a lot of client work. We were playing with Gutenberg, and we kind of decided as a strategy to just disable all the the ones that come with Gutenberg uh, with WordPress and create our own. Because otherwise, you just the time you spend on kind of hacking into the ones that are already there, uh, you might as well might as well build what you exactly what you need. Yeah. Exactly. For agencies, that's probably the way to go. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll repeat that for uh, also for the video. Uh, what Sarkis was saying is that the attributes that are in currently blocks, uh, they disable them for uh, making it uh, impossible for customers to use it and to, well, abuse it, basically. Abuse it. Yeah. Abuse it. Yeah. That's what you say. OK? <coughs> Thanks for that, Tak. Um, OK, so this is, this is what you can do with, uh, with Gutenberg in the basics. Uh, of course, you can add a lot of other things. And the thing that they're working on right now, because, and I'm going to uh, walk around a bit because I don't like sitting and talking. Um, Gutenberg right now, is uh, an editor that basically, if you have a site structure with a header, with a navigation, with a content area, possibly a sidebar and a footer, um, Gutenberg positions itself in the post content. So everything around your post content is not um, affected by anything you do in Gutenberg. So if you want to see Gutenberg as a page builder, who, who uses page builders? Okay, that's a lot of people. Um, and I sound surprised, and that's correct, but because I am. Um, Gutenberg, at this point, is not a page builder. Um, it probably will be one in the far or near future, I don't know. Um, one of the signs that uh, it's probably going to be one is because of a block they have introduced, which is called, and I have to show it right here, which is this block. It's a columns block. It's experimental, basically saying it doesn't work because I tried it and <laughs> you get two blocks. And I, well, I, of course, I'm here and I'm showing it so I can show it to you. So I'm going to add this uh, well, two uh, columns block. So what you see here is you get two columns. Okay, so that works. Um, and if you now want to see, oh, where is the advanced? Oh, here's the advanced <coughs> settings. I'm now trying to, to look at the advanced settings, which I did yesterday evening before I went to sleep to just walk around this and test it again. And I had an attributes, um, uh, oh, uh, how do you say it? An attributes part here in which I could say I want two, three, four, five columns. And well, at this moment, moment of course, that's not working. And basically, you should be able to add other blocks to these columns, and which is kind of called nested blocks. So you can have a block within a block uh, inception. And if that happens and if that works, um, Gutenberg can be extended abo above and beyond the, the post content. And it can really be a, a piece of, well, it can be a tool to be a page builder. And whether you want it or not, well, you can use it if it's there. Um, another thing that enables Gutenberg as being a page builder in the far future is that you can save blocks for reuse. <coughs> you can convert a button, like this click me button, 
For instance, you have a lot of pages where you want to use the same button and you don't want to create that button every time. You can make it a reusable block. You can give it a title. This is the click me, oh, sorry, the click me block. You can save it and then later on you can use it in another block you know, or in another page, I'm sorry. Uh, so this basically enables you to make a structure for your site, make reusable blocks for your header, for your footer, uh, possibly for your sidebar in which you add another block with some kind of widgets. And this basically enables Gutenberg to be a page builder. This is far future talk. I'm, I'm not sure whether this is going to happen, but it, the functions that you see landing in Gutenberg right now might indicate that it's going to go that way. Um, another issue for Gutenberg was the, um, how do you say it, compatibility with meta boxes. Who doesn't know what a meta box is? <laughs> Okay, I'm going to explain it because there's one, one guy in here who doesn't know it. I'm not going to look at him. He's right there. <laughs> and uh, a meta box is a box uh, which can have uh, one or more input fields uh, which you add to a post. Uh, a good example is the Yoast meta box. It adds a lot of options to a post or a page uh, which you can set for that post, uh, which is basically all in a meta box. In Gutenberg, in one of the first releases, there were no meta boxes. So all developers were like, well, I don't have an animated GIF about that, but they were in panic uh, because there's no meta box. And you can imagine, uh, well, to get Yoast as an example again, if that meta box is not going to land in Gutenberg, well, basically the Yoast plugin is unusable because you can't add it. Um, in further releases of Gutenberg, uh, meta boxes have been added. Um, uh, plugin developers, well, became a bit more happy but then they saw that they needed to do a lot of work to get their meta boxes working in Gutenberg. Well, basically a lot of plugin developers are working on that to, in, to integrate their meta boxes in Gutenberg. Uh, I know Advanced Custom Fields has it, and I know that because basically on the bottom here are custom fields which I have added in a different tab right here. For the people who don't know Advanced Custom Fields, this enables you to create own fields which you can add to posts or pages and reuse later on in your post content. And, well, I've added some extra information, which is basically a text field, and I've added a user uh, group for that. So going back to this, we see this, sorry, we see this extra information meta box in which I added a picture of Sir Gutenberg, and I've added a thingy that I was building to make this post accessible for a certain user. So I had done a little bit of programming with that, added a box in advanced custom fields, and you can see that this meta box is, well, showing right beneath Gutenberg. Um, so Yoast is working on it, uh, advanced custom fields is working on it, and basically has something that really works. And I know Gravity Forms, I uh, saw a lot of hands going up in the air in the previous presentation um, uh, of people who've been using Gravity Forms. So that's a good thing that you can add Gravity Forms and use it with, uh, with Gutenberg and immediately, immediately see your form in the content editor. Because the people that are using Gravity Forms know that if you add a form, which has a nice button, add form, you can select the form. But in the end, you get a short code in your content. And well, you don't really know what the form looks like. So this is a good thing for Gutenberg, that a lot of developers are picking this up and making Gutenberg accessible for all these plugins and making it a better product in the end. Um, are there any questions about how Gutenberg looks right now and what you can do with it? <coughs> Are there any concerns? Okay, go ahead. Nothing. No, no. You can you can select. The, the question was if uh, you activate Gutenberg on your site, and uh, what is going to happen with all your other posts? Uh, well, basically the answer is nothing because um, when you add a new post. Um, let me see how I do that. Yes, I'm going to leave this page. Sorry for my edits. Um, when you activate it, Gutenberg, this thingy comes up when you add a new post. So you can select whether you want a new uh, classic editor post or create a Gutenberg post. And all your existing posts will just display as they would.
that answer your question? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, I, uh, so this is a plugin, but when it will be released, it will be a major replicate of, of, of WordPress. Yes. And in that case, this uh, will continue to work in Gutenberg forms or classic I'm not sure if that's going to be uh, happening. I think it will, because if you totally flip the switch on one time, when it will be released, it, it's scheduled to be released with WordPress 5.0, uh, which we are, well, we are approaching that release. Um, but I guess they are not going to flip the switch one time. Right now, you can only do Gutenberg posts. Uh, people have to adapt, have to try and work with it, because not a lot of people are working with it yet. It, Gutenberg plugin has about 6,000 installs. So there's not a lot of people using it. Um, that's not 30% of the internet. So there's a lot of people who need to use it and uh, test it and give feedback about it. Because I read that the backwards compatibility will be supported by the plugin. Uh, yeah, that depends. Uh, the, well, the backwards compatibility uh, thing is something that plugins need to um, plugin developers need to check out themselves, and they need to work with Gutenberg and see how their plugin interacts with Gutenberg uh, and fix where necessary. Thank you. Other questions? Sure. I'll. Uh, waar we heel veel content op onze site, als we naar Gutenberg gaan, dan ziet dat er goed uit. Maar we hebben ook redacteurs die wat bijvoorbeeld dan een taalpotje willen eruit halen of iets doen. En ze dan aan de te eten, dan gooit die bijvoorbeeld uh, in wat in elkaar zitten. Genest uh, eigenlijk, dat is een post nu. Het uh, een opzomming uit elkaar, dus dan wordt eigenlijk de content al helemaal. Oké, hmm. oké, okay. okay. I'll, I'll try to translate this. Um, uh, what she's saying is that uh, when a, uh, uh, well, colleagues of her are trying to edit content, when Gutenberg is activated, uh, that it basically messes up content of classic edited posts. Uh, I'm not aware of that. I don't know. It happens when um, code is not valid. Uh, you mean HTML code, which is not valid. OK. If, if there is one end tag missing, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. Basically, that's the same uh, thing that happens if you do it in a classic editor. If you start editing HTML there, well, unexpected things are about to happen. Um, so that's maybe something that Gutenberg will pick up. But if you really have an issue with it, you should go to the GitHub repository and write this case to the developers, and maybe they can do something about it. So thanks for this. Okay, I see a hand there in the, in the back. Rian. Yeah. What was the name of that plugin? Cla just classic editor. Okay. There's a thanks for that, Rion. There's a, a plugin available uh, with a lot of developments uh, within WordPress, um, which make changes to the way people work with WordPress. There's always people who don't like the changes or need more time to adapt to the changes. And that's the freedom of WordPress that we have. We can create a plugin that disables the change. And same thing is for Gutenberg. There's a Gutenberg coming up. If you don't like it or you need more time to adapt to it or adapt your own software to it, there's a plugin uh, which is called Classic Editor, which basically disables Gutenberg as soon as it arrives in WordPress 5.0. So if you need time as, a, as an agency to uh, give workshops to your clients of how to use Gutenberg, uh, and want to postpone the time that you flip the switch to Gutenberg, um, install that plugin and give your clients more time to learn how to work with it. Thanks, Leon. Boss. Uh, you told me yesterday that you put two weeks full time to uh, make the presentation, so thank you very much for putting this thank big you. effort. Thank you. Question for you. The project Gutenberg sounds really separated from WordPress which makes it possible that Gutenberg will work on Drupal and Magento in a few years, or maybe faster. What's your vision? Will it be bigger than WordPress? My vision? OK, this is being recorded, so I have to be careful. <laughs> no, <laughs> no I'm, uh, well, the question basically is um, what my vision is on how Gutenberg will evolve. Will it, will it well, be only a WordPress thingy, or will it be able to uh, go, well, abroad and well maybe go to other CMSs or in five years. If it's and in five years in that's um, uh, <laughs> in five years I think Gutenberg um, is a grown-up 
Yeah, sure, go down. I don't need you anymore. Um, I'm, I'm tired. I have, I have a few slides left, uh, but I'm not going to uh, do this again. I've got five minutes left also. But the Gutenberg will be a, uh, a grown-up product. And there's a lot of websites uh, who enable clients to build their own websites who are using editors which look a, a bit like Gutenberg and WordPress cannot stay behind. If WordPress doesn't do anything about the editing experience, I think WordPress is going to decline looking at market share. So Gutenberg is going to be a great way for WordPress to uh, uh, keep or even grow the, the market share of CMSs and it will be a total new editing experience for all of us. So I really urge everybody to, well, make some time for it and use Gutenberg, uh, test it, uh, report and those kind of things. So thank you boss. Um, I had a few slides left um, on here and I'm not going to, uh, to try and launch it again right here. Uh, one of the things is that uh, I'm wearing this shirt today which has the nice Gutenberg logo on it uh, and a WAPU on the back. And if you like Gutenberg and you want to show people that you like it, you can buy this shirt, not in my own shop, no, uh, in the WordPress.org merchandise shop, which is mercantile.wordpress.org. It's in my presentation, which I will share with all of you through Twitter uh, and through the, the WordCamp website. And, uh, well, you can buy it there, basically. Uh, to, to continue on my vision of Gutenberg, um, it's going to be the future. Don't well, stand back and wait for it to go away, because it will not. Gutenberg is here to stay. It's a little baby right now. It's trying to grow up, and we all need to help it grow up, and we all need to help it learn stuff, how we use WordPress. So I'm going to call again, use it, test it, report, create issues, and make this product better for WordPress in the near future. That's going to be my last uh, sentence of my presentation. Um, we have room for questions? Yeah, we have. Yeah, great. Then we're going to do that. Questions, please. Go ahead. Is there uh, still a backdoor to HTML like you have in the default editor, the HTML? Yes, you can. You can uh, all the blocks that are created, you can convert them to HTML blocks. Uh, and you can well edit uh, the HTML if you want it. And if you adhere to all the HTML standards, you can also revert that back to the basic block. So if you have an image block in which you want to add some stuff in the HTML, you can also revert it back to an image block. So, yeah. Okay, another question? Still based on short codes, because it's just like a, a plugin you installed. Yeah. So I can imagine it's just a layer above. No, basically, if uh, the, the question if is, is is Gutenberg still based on short codes? Um, the simple and short answer to that is no. Um, what Gutenberg currently does, it, it adds uh, meta information about your blocks as HTML comment, which also makes it possible to create things in Gutenberg and uh, revert if you don't want to use Gutenberg again. Uh, you will see your content in normal uh, text or normal in images. Text. Yeah, okay. in raw text. Exactly. Classic mode. In, in the classic editor the text mode. mode, the classic mode text. Uh, uh, yes, in that text mode, correct. Yeah. yeah. So there's no more short codes involved. Okay. So we don't want to bother users again with short codes. Other question? question. Yeah, another question, but something to ask. Um, I think it's important to state that Gutenberg does not what you see is what you get. It just happens that the blocks yeah, that come with Gutenberg are. But if plugin authors decide to set up their block, they decide how they will look in the front end and on the back end. That's a good so addition. It would be nice to have somewhat what you see is what you get experience, but it's totally up to the authors of the blocks. Yeah. And I think it's important for editors or authors <coughs> because it's not always this what you see in the back end, but what yeah, this is what you see. Yeah, that's right. Thank you, Torsten, for that addition. Yeah. Paul, go ahead. Um, how do we prepare our customers for Gutenberg? That's a difficult one. You can start right now. Uh, the question was how do you prepare your customers uh, for working with Gutenberg? Um, as I was saying, I've been working with it a few uh, weeks and I constantly see changes. So you can start a workshop, you can build a workshop for your customers, you can uh, give the workshop, uh, but basically in the end it may change again. Uh, the basic functionality will remain the same, but there are a lot of stuff, tiny little thingies, which we all hate in WordPress because if a tiny little thing changes, it might break something. So it's really difficult. You have to inform your customers maybe that it, it's coming, it's there. Uh, 
uh, there are changes coming. And if you want to know more about it, well, schedule a meeting or talk with a client and inform them. That's basically what I am doing. And uh, customers like it. They see it. Some customers hate it. They don't want to use it. They're, well, running away from it. Uh, but it's coming. And you have to inform your customers that it is coming. And you have to, or have to, uh, it would be good to have your customers work with it and test it and see what it's going to be like to work with WordPress in, well, one, two years. Okay. Other question? Can you use <coughs> short code by other plugins inside Gutenberg? Oh, I'm not sure. The question is, can you use short codes which are available by plugins that you've currently installed, if you can use it in the current blocks? Um, I'm not sure. I haven't tested that out. Um, I know. I, is there somebody here that tested it to use short codes in text blocks in Gutenberg? No, nobody. I have to check that out. It's something that I would like to check out. Um, initially, the goal, of course, is to totally eliminate, eliminate short codes. Short codes should be blocks if you go the Gutenberg way. So we'll have to test it. Maybe it's something for you to install Gutenberg, try it, and if it doesn't work, report it. Excellent. Thank you. One final question. Sorry. Yeah, I've, I've seen or saw something, read something about it, but I'm not sure, so we'll have to check it out. Well, thanks. Yeah. Okay, one final question. I see one question there. Yes? Will it be ready? Nesting. Uh, you mean the nesting of blocks? Um, well, the development team has been has started with it. Uh, they've published the block. Um, you can use it, which doesn't work yet. But initially, I think it's going to happen. And uh, being able to nest blocks and create columns and stuff will totally put Gutenberg in a next level of usage. And it, it will happen. Yeah, I'm sure of I'm sure of that. Yeah. <coughs> Yeah, that's going to happen. Basically, what, what you see right now is you can add a, a block which provides two columns, but you can also have a block which provides, uh, uh, well, text combined with an image and a video, I don't know. You can put that in one block within a column, basically. And that enables to do a lot of magic with Gutenberg, which you can't do right now without a page builder. Okay, thank you very much. If you have further questions, uh, try and look up the guy with this yellow shirt because there's only one of me. And uh, I want to thank you for your, uh, um, for your attention and wish you all a good WordCamp and work. Thank, thank you. you very much.